all of us. It's about predicting where the consumer is going and getting half of it right. One of the things we want to do is create ads that don't suck. Embracing change creates great possibility. I'm Alan Hart, and this is Marketing Today. This October, I had the pleasure of being an MC and moderating a number of panels at the Brand Marketing Summit at the Marriott at the Brooklyn Bridge in New York. While I was at the summit, I got to do a couple reaction recordings from four individuals. So this episode, you'll hear four short mini interviews with Michael Blash, Chief Commercial Officer of Inc. Bench, Allegra O'Hare, who has been on the show before, the VP Global Brand Communications for Adidas Originals, Casey Hall, Director of Social Media for Thompson Reuters, and Abhinav Varma, co-founder and CEO of Unibees. These four individuals kind of represent a broad spectrum, if you will, of marketers today, those that focus on social media, more general managers, and even an entrepreneur thrown in for good measure. I hope you enjoy these reactions from the Brand Marketing Summit. Why don't you introduce yourself? My name is Michael Blash. I'm Chief Commercial Officer for Inkbench. Great. What's top of mind for Inkbench today? I think what's top of mind for a company like Inkbench, which is built on active creative collaboration that's delivering powerful brand control, is how companies that are marketing their brand can be better at the process of getting their content created, managed, and ultimately out there it's a real struggle to create value in the digital supply chain. Right. There's so many versions of creative assets. It's a lot to manage, especially if you add people to the equation. (laughs) It is so easy for a brand to get lost or misused or not even appear at all when you are managing an ever-growing mountain of digital branded content. And digital branded content And the volume growth of it is astounding and it's overwhelming for marketers and communicators as we move ahead in the current environment. Well, so far, this is day one of the summit. We haven't covered a lot of topics, but there has been mention of experience. And I'm just curious, how do you think about the customer journey or customer experience? One of the things at this meeting that has struck me about the customer journey or customer experience is the notion that Turner is talking about, which is creating or making fanatics. And what's interesting for me in a way I've reframed a little bit how I think about the customer journey is you start with audience, then you want to create followers, convert them into customers, and then make them fanatics. And if you can make a customer a fanatic, you have a customer for life, a customer who's going to help attract other customers. So that's the benefit of having someone go down the continuum to ultimately be a fanatic for your brand. Yeah, that's great advice. As you think about trying to amplify your message or your efforts in the marketplace, what are you, you know, what's next? What are you thinking about? I think what's next for brands in the marketplace is how to create relevance for the various micro target audiences. Because the days of one message hitting an entire broad audience and resonating with them, that's gone. I'd actually argue there never was a time that an entire broad audience felt that they resonated with any single message. So in a world where you have splitting of audience, splitting of channels, you're fundamentally telling one story for your brand, but how do you make sure that it really makes an impact and really resonates with individual particular audiences? That's the real challenge in what we're doing as marketers and communicators. Nice. What's a key insight you've taken from the summit so far? Still early in the summit, but... Yeah, still early in the summit, but a key insight for me from this summit is just how complex the data set is getting out there. We are awash in data. As the person who presented from Localytics said, the amount of data, the exponential growth in data is just astounding. I actually stole another statistic that the amount of data is doubling every year. And by the year 2021, there will be as many bits of data out there as there are stars in the universe. That is astounding. That's almost infinitely big. How do you wade through that much data and make sense of it? That's the challenge. Nice. Well, stepping back from the summit, was there a best piece of advice you've received in your career? Anything that stands out? I think one of the best pieces of advice I've received in my career is to stop and listen. 
And one of the speakers today actually talked about the two sides of the brain, if you will, or the two sides of the thought process. One is the intuitive, which causes us to automatically react. But the other side is the more reflective side where you stop and listen and think. Mm. Stop, listen, and think is really important. That was a great piece of advice I've received from some great leaders that I've worked with in the past. Great. There's so much information out there today. Is there a source of information you go to to stay up to date? I think for what we do as marketers and communicators, unquestionably the best source of information that I found is LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is a platform that really has it right for people who are looking for sources of business information and even starting to go into a little more of the personal side, though my recommendation is they need to slow down on some things because at some point you don't want LinkedIn to feel like Facebook. You want it to really feel like you're getting great business information. And because of how that social platform works, you can find and get targeted to you, delivered to you, the information you need as a marketer or a communicator or a brand manager or what have you. Great. Last question. One thing you love and one thing you hate, or if you don't hate things, thing you, something you despise. <laughs> God, that's a tough question. I mean, personally, I have a love-hate relationship with pizza, uh, <laughs> uh, but I don't think that's what you're looking for. Yeah, no worries. That's fine. We'll use pizza as your answer. Pizza's a fine <laughs> answer. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Allegro, would you introduce yourself? Yeah, Allegro Hair, Vice President, Brand Marketing and Communication for Adidas. What's top of mind for your brand today? Well, I think top of mind right now is how to keep challenging the status quo and how to not be complacent about things. So I think that's the number one challenge from a brand point of view. The second one is probably how to balance brand and commerce. So, you know, we've got KPIs, we've got business objectives, <laughs> a lot of pressure in, in the market and from the consumer, but we also have to champion the brand. Right. And so there's a sweet spot there. I think that's really interesting and important between brand and commerce. Yeah. Is that balancing both the short term revenue impact and the long term brand? Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's a constant challenge for sure. How are you thinking about the customer journey or the customer experience as it relates to your yeah, brand? Yeah, I think what we want to do is to really focus our efforts and be more surgical with regards to deliverables that we create for our campaigns. So really working up front with not just our lead creative agencies, but also with the highly skilled and specialized agencies that we work with in social media and PR and really getting everybody on board from the beginning, building that consumer journey and then landing it at the end. So I think that... We think it through much more upfront than we used to. Got it. Well, and what's next on how you are trying to amplify either your efforts or your message overall? Yeah, it's a huge challenge because <laughs> it goes back to focus and what we call mean more and doing less. And it's a constant challenge like 24 seven is like, how do you cut the long tail? How do you really focus your efforts on, you know, what the consumer really wants to see and what has impact? So I think that that's the biggest effort that we're doing right now. Right. Well, I know we're early on day one, so I'm going to skip my insight question <laughs> okay. from the summit because I haven't seen that much yet. But what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Well, in general, mm -hmm. it's just a philosophy that I think about all the time is it's do something that scares you every day. And it could be picking up the phone and talking to somebody nasty to, I guess some people want to jump out of airplanes. That's fine. <laughs> but I think if you if you have fear stop you in your thinking, I think it's a big obstacle. So I kind of like that catchphrase. And the other thing, it's more business related. It's about hiring people. Mm. I really believe in people and how important people are to the success of a company. And it's take your time. Mm. It's take your time in hiring people, you know, making sure you, you do your facts and obviously background checks and everything else, but trust your instinct and, and really make sure that you get the best talent on board. Mm. Well, we're all bombarded by all information from all over the place. What's your best source of information? That's a great question because you're right, because we get a lot of information from all over the place. I really trust my team. I have a team that, you know, works on comms and gets, you know, one kind of information with regards to campaign creation. I have a team that works on social media. They get a different kind of, obviously, list of data that they use for, for their decision making. And then I've got retail, et cetera. So it's really about the team. And I, that's my best source of information. Great filter. <laughs> and last question, just a little fun to have. One thing you love and one thing you hate, or if you don't hate things, 
something you despise? <laughs> something I really despise? Probably arrogance. I think that's just a characteristic that I really cannot let's say, get along with, because I, I really believe in, you know, being open-minded and working together. And that goes into what things I love. So it is about camaraderie and it's about the team and, and building off of ideas. I think that that's a great source of inspiration and of passion, I think, in general. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on. Thank you. So Casey, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Casey Hall, and I am Director in Communications for Social Media at Thomson Reuters. We just got off listening to your talk about employee engagement. And so maybe that's what's top of mind for your brand today, but what's top of mind for your brand today? Yeah, and definitely top of mind for me today. So talking about employee advocacy and at the Brand Marketing Summit today, really talking about how we can use our employees to humanize our brand, to get our brand story out in a way that is really difficult to do through our branded channels. I mean, we do a lot of activations, but I think that having our employees tell that story adds a lot of authenticity, a lot of power, and it brings our employees sort of into that storytelling mindset, the digital storytelling mindset, that I think provides a really nice foundation for the future and how we're going to be engaging with the customers in the future. Right. As a consultant to companies, I always find it odd that, that there's their biggest asset usually is their employee base, and not yeah. many people are taking advantage of that yeah. as an amplification. Yeah, yeah, and I think, I mean, I this is probably true for many companies, but at Thomson Reuters, we have some really, really incredible employees. I mean, not just that they're great employees, but we have engineers and photographers and journalists and attorneys and things who really, and many times, literally write the books on the topics that they talk about. So right. it's a great asset and we need to use it. That's great. Well, one of the things that folks have been talking about at the summit have been customer journey or customer experience. How do you think about the customer experience and journey for your yourself? Sure. So, you know, for us, I think the customer journey and experience has to start with, you know, whatever that first kind of touches, and that might not even come directly from us because Thomson Reuters has a global footprint and we do a lot of different things. It might be, you know, some interaction with the news or something else, but make sure that that journey makes sense and is really enjoyable for the customer all the way through to our products, to our software, to the interactions they might have with our company, you know an administrative level, making sure that every piece of that kind of makes sense together. Got it. What's next in terms of how to amplify your efforts or your message? Sure. So I you know, was talking about employee advocacy, which we've been doing for a while at Thompson Reuters. First is kind of an informal program and now becoming a more and more formal program. And I think the next phase and what we've already started doing is figuring out how to bring some of those people to the next level, whether they're subject matter experts, they're already executives or leaders, how to bring them up to a point where they can be really influential. I mean, I think a lot of them are in smaller kind of areas where they're known, but to broaden that uh, scope so that they really know how to be the ones who are leading the conversation in those spaces. Got it. Got it. Any key insight so far from the summit? Uh, this is the first day. So yeah, this is the first day. Pass. You know, the one of the speakers that I saw earlier today was from Lego. And first of all, amazing. And I think a huge advantage is based on kind of the product and right. being an awesome thing to do there. But the way that he, they were talking about you know, user-generated content, which I, I thought was really, really great and exciting. And that's not going to work for every company like it does for Lego necessarily. But I think when you have something where you can build a community like that, talked about the builder community that they have of people creating things, something similar to what the person from National Geographic talked about, which was this photographer community. Mm. And then they have one, I forget exactly how it worked, but they have then would feature some of those community photographs in actually in National Geographic. Wow. So I think that, you know, building those communities is something that's really nice to hear about and something that you know I think I've that I'll bring back and kind of look at how we're doing that. Nice. What's the best advice you've gotten? Maybe in your career, maybe just in general <laughs> in life. You know, it's hard to think of, of one specific piece of good advice. Maybe what comes to mind first. Yeah. I don't know. I can't think of one one real great piece of advice. I think overall the yeah. one of like my mottos working in a big company is the ability or just deciding to move forward with something, even if you're not completely sure that it's going to work and you don't have every single, you know, I crossed and or T crossed and I dotted. I think sometimes like with the, I was talking about the employee advocacy program earlier, you know, find a way to start doing something that you want to do and, you know, test it out first, get it to work and then maybe get ready to make your big case. So people who want to write now, you know, you can go online and you can be a writer. You don't have to wait for publishing. If you want to engage in, you know, kind of social media stuff, you can go out and you can become an influencer now. Mm. I think a lot of the things that we have, people are kind of waiting for permission for. 
And it's something that um, you don't necessarily need to do. Interesting. Good, good advice. Best source of information you get today? Really, it is coming to conferences like this and other interactions that I have with people in the industry. I mean, it's great. I you know, follow people on LinkedIn and their blog posts and articles and, and podcasts, obviously. Podcasts are clearly the best source of information. <laughs> Appreciate that, Nod. Yeah. Thank you. But really the one-on-one -on -one conversations mm -hmm. that that all kind of facilitates, right? So those are all building the relationships. And then when you can have you know the specific conversation, when there's people that I can call at other companies or other places and be like, hey, have you guys seen this kind of thing? And how did you handle it? You know, That peer network is by far the best source of information for me. Great. But last question, hopefully a fun one. One yeah. thing you love one thing you hate, or if you don't like the word hate, despise. Despise. One thing I love is you know, travel. I, I'm not, not a world traveler by any stretch of the imagination, but get to all the places that I can and try to bring the family along as often as possible for some of that. And so that's, I guess, one thing I love. Something I despise, geez. I would say... Nothing I can think of. No, <laughs> nothing nothing I, I can think of that I. I was going to say. I was going to give a, a disclaimer because we didn't talk about your background, but I know you're a lawyer by training. Yes, so Maybe yes. that one was going to be difficult anyway. Yeah. Right. You have yeah, to. So. Yeah. No, no. Nothing I specifically despise, but I, I'm very glad. I'll say, uh, building off of that, that I decided when I, as soon as I realized, even after going through law school for three years. As soon as I realized that I don't enjoy this, right. I don't want to be an attorney. Uh, not that I ever despised being an attorney, but. The ability to walk away from something that you realize that is right. not your fit or, you know, being open to whatever kind of comes along, you know, the path from law school to director of communications is not a very direct one, but it's been wonderful. And the ability to kind of leave, you know, move on to the next thing is is great. So not despising, but maybe being ready to move on uh -huh. is what, okay. what I'm ready for. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's great to meet you. Why don't you introduce yourself? Thank you. My name is Abhinav and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Unibees. Unibees is a mobile application that helps students find various activities on campus and helps brands connect with this elusive demographic. Mm. I saw a recent interview you did and basically I could, if I was using your app and as a student on campus, I could probably eat for free for an entire semester. Yes, that's true. <laughs> I mean, like when we were back in the school two years ago, we found this event where there was free pizza and we thought that, you know, there should be more of these. And like we went and researched and launched it and it worked out very well. Yeah. Nice. What's top of mind for your company today? Right now we have just launched 100 universities. So the top priority would be to get students to use it as much as possible. You know, talk to them about the benefits and with so much noise in the media right now, social media as well with so many different channels, we're trying to get the message across clearly about what we do and like how beneficial it's for the students. All right. And how are you thinking about either the customer journey or the experience that they're having with the product? Yeah, they're having a very amazing experience. We have a lot of stickiness, a lot of retention. I mean, our usage is at record high right now. I mean, compared to like the last two years, we've, we've pushed out some really cool updates. You know, like uh, we've launched the freebies filter wherein you just click on the freebies and you know everything that's going on campus. <laughs> so that's the most used uh, feature. And, you know, like uh, they're exploring the application and, you know, they're using it like for 5.4 minutes a day. So that's like quite good amount of time they're using it for. Nice. Well, what's next in uh, amplifying your efforts or your message? What are you trying to, what are you going to do next? Do next, like get it to as many students, as I said, you know, right now we're in a hundred right now in the plans to scale to a thousand and internationally as soon as possible. So we built some uh, really cool AI on the mm -hmm. back that, you know, like uh, gathers all this information without having to go there. Mm -hmm. So it's, and hyper localizes it. So as of today, we can scale globally. But we want to get it to work in the U.S. Uh, very actively before we go and make a step out. Interesting. And uh, you've been at the summit now. This We're just at the beginning of the second day. So any key insight over the first day? Yeah, I think uh, it was surrounding people. And I really loved the fact that how people were the heart of it, even if so much data is around, even if whatever is around, you know, people are the heart of everything and, you know, hiring and recruiting the right people to do the right things for you. That's the only way to take your brand to the next level. I think that's what I learned from the summit. Okay. Best advice you've ever received could be anything. Is to give value. Give value. I yeah, like that. it's like give value and like give as much value as you can. And, you know, you'll get back. Uh, you don't need to expect it, but give as much as you can and like value will always come find you. Hmm. And best source of information today, where do you go to stay current? Right now, uh, I think uh, consuming podcasts is the best source of information. I <laughs> appreciate and, that. <laughs> yeah. And like I listen to the Wall Street Journal's two minute briefing in the morning. Yeah. 
and I hope one day that uh, I could listen to some great marketing insights from uh, marketing Alan today. Hartz. Yeah, <laughs> marketing today. Yeah. All right. Well, last question, fun one. I hope one yeah. thing you love and one thing you hate or despise if you don't hate anything. I love pizza. My entire company is built on pizza. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Yeah, and I don't hate anything as per se. Right. But I despise people who try to, you know, like not promote entrepreneurship or like promote mm. the entrepreneurial spirit. Like back from where I am, like uh, it was not very, they used to not promote entrepreneurship mm -hmm. as much. You know, I would love people more to promote entrepreneurship and US is the best place to do that. So I love the place here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much, Alan. Thank you for having me. Hi, it's Alan again. Marketing Today was created and produced by me with writing and editing by Kevin Greeley. Social media support by Megan Woods. Art and graphic design by Sarah Dell. If you're new to marketing today, please feel free to write us a review on iTunes or your favorite listening platform. Don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends and colleagues about the show. I love to hear from listeners and you can contact me at marketingtodaypodcast.com. There you'll also find complete show notes with links to anything we talk about on any episode. You can also search our archives. I'm Alan Hart, and this is Marketing Today.